the most important thing you can take away from today probably is this. Um, you need to fully diagnose your cases, even the stuff that you're not treating. Okay? And people ask me, well, what am I going to do on HICFA form? I only have four you know, entries. Call your software vendor and say, you know, is there somewhere that I can put these extra, you know, these extra diagnoses? Some people say box 19. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been a doctor, so I don't worry about that kind of stuff too much. But um, the other thing I would suggest is a diagnoses checklist or a, a diagnostic list. So let's say that somebody comes in. I mean, seriously, is somebody coming in with a sprain strain that doesn't also have something else going on? I mean, the likelihood is no. Um, uh, and you're probably not doing a lot of treatment on sprain strains um, unless you're doing icing or something like that. So there's got to be something a little bit more important going on in a lot of these cases. And you want to find out what that is. So then prioritize them. What's the most su substantial injury in the case? Is it, you know, a fracture? Is it a, uh, uh, you know, is it a subluxation? Is it a dislocation? Is it a brain injury? Okay, you're not going to be treating a brain injury probably, but, you know, you might want to stick that 310.2 in there and say, well, post-concussion syndrome or an 850.1, you know, a, a, a mild traumatic brain injury with a brief loss of consciousness. You know, because when they see that, when the insurance companies see it and when the insurance company's bill review software programs see it, they're going to say, here's a case that's more serious than just a regular 847 sprain strain case. Because if you've got four 847 codes there, they're just going to say, well, you know, this is a case that should be resolved within 8 to 12 weeks. There's no reason why this guy is treating this person 12, you know, 12 weeks later, three months later, six months later, something like that. There's got to be something else going on. You got to follow that up. Somebody asked me uh, during this lecture in Portland last week, not last week, two weeks ago, I think it was, um, it doesn't it look weird to re-diagnose or something at some point? And I said, no way. That is the best thing. I can tell you jurors, every time I've had that come up in a jury trial, the jurors love it. Go there and tell them, you know what? I thought that it was this. And I pursued treatment this way. And then I realized, you know, she's not getting better. I got to figure out something else. So I went to this other specialist or I sent her for an MRI. And then I realized, wow, you know, she actually has a large disc herniation at L5. And that changed my perception of what was going on with this case. And all of a sudden, that became you know, the big thing in the case. Um, they love it because they know that you are out there trying to figure out what's wrong with the person. And you're, you're willing to go back and reconsider your evaluation and make the appropriate change for the patient. Okay, It's a huge, it's a huge thing, I think, for uh, the jury.